Hi, thanks for taking the time to have a look at the Formatize Pest Control app. There are two main parts to this solution. Firstly, there is the actual app that sits on a smartphone or a tablet, and that's what we'll be having a look at first. And secondly, there is the management portal, and that is a tool that's used in the office. It is a secure website, so it can be accessed in the field as well from your device if you have internet connection. There's a whole heap of cool stuff that the management portal does, but we'll have a look at that in a little while. Let's take a look at how the app works, and this is what the technician will be using out in the field. What you're seeing here is the login page. Each user has their own login details. This login, amongst other things, brings that particular user's name and license details into the reports automatically. There is also an offline mode you can see here, so that reports can be completed when you have no phone signal. Once we hit login, you'll see the status page with forms, jobs and resources. The forms section is all the forms that your company has requested sitting there ready to be started at any time. So you can open up any of these forms and complete an inspection report. The resource section here is essentially an e-library of relevant documents to your business. You can upload these documents via the, the web management portal and it's incredibly easy to do. Resources can be things like material safety data sheets like you can see here. It could be sales brochures if your company is running a promotion. The, the agent or the technician can show the client exactly what, uh, what the deal is. What this means is your com the company technicians have all the relevant information in the app right there with them on site. And the company administrator has complete version control of these resources. Let's go back and we'll go into the jobs tab. Now what I've done here is created a job in the portal and sent it to myself to show you how the, how the actual forms work. So here you can see under select a job, we've got a job for Mrs. Smith uh, the due date is the 24th of March and it's due at 10.30 a.m. Okay, there's a little note there to tell me to beware of the dog and knock before going around the back. So all sorts of information can be uh, yeah, messaged to the, to the tech via this system. We'll go into, into the job just by clicking on it. And here you can see the location, uh, the name of, of who the job's for, what report needs to be done. And it also shows you a map of... Uh, the green pin is where I am and the red pin is the job location. Okay, so let's go in and start the job. When we touch begin, it goes into the, the form and what you're seeing here is the form broken up into different subheadings. This just means that you can go into any section of the form at any time rather than just working from top to bottom. The top section here is for email addresses. Any email address entered into this box will receive a finished copy of the PDF report. You can add as many email addresses as you like just by touching send another auto email. If you want to send the same report to the client, the real estate agent, maybe the bank or whoever might be requesting it, you can add that as many times as you like. I'll just remove those because we, we don't need them. Okay, now you just got to remember that this section here, any email address entered will receive a finished copy of the PDF when you hit submit. Okay, let's go into client details. The client box is what we call an open text box. When you touch on this box, it will bring up the keyboard automatically for you to type in the client's name. Now I've already done that when I, uh, when I entered the job, so I put client information that maybe is, is just a pain for the tech to fill in. That can all be done in the management portal before the tech even sees the form. So that's what I've done there. The client address and the structure address, or whenever there's an address box in a form, you can touch the fetch button, which will automatically grab a GPS location and populate the box. Now if it's not quite right, you can just touch on that field and edit that if you need to. Simple as that. The phone fax mobile 
fields here that you can see, they will bring up the correct keyboard. So it brings up the, the phone or the number keypad. So you're not fiddling around with different keypads to find the one that you need. So you can as simple as enter a number into that one. For the date of inspection, all you need to do is touch on that and it'll grab the date that the form's been opened. So it's obviously today's date. You can change that if you need to, just by rolling the wheel. But it will always default to the right date to save you having to touch it at all. What you can see in the next section here is, oops, sorry, wrong one. What you can see in the next section here is the photos. So there is photos right throughout the report. Um, but there's two real options of, of how to take a photo. You can add a photo from the camera by touching the button, add photo from camera. That will straight away bring up the camera in the actual device. So you can, you can take a photo. Then just hit use photo and that photo then you can see there's one photo in that section. The other option is you can add a photo from the library. So it'll take you into your device's photo library. You can choose the photo that you think is appropriate. Uh, let's view the photos now. Okay, that one's not really good, so we'll get rid of that. And there's the photo that we're going to use, so we'll close that. That photo will now come out on the front page of the report. Okay, let's go into brief description of building and other structures on the property. So this section here is basically designed to show you how quick you can move through a form when you know what you're doing. And it'll only take you a few times and you'll have a complete understanding of it. Okay, for the type of building, you can just touch on that. It'll give you a drop down. You can choose the drop down just by touching it. So the height of the building, let's say it's two story. The building type is cavity brick. The piers section here, you'll notice is check boxes instead of a drop down. This is used for when you need more than one answer. You can tick as many of these as you like. So you might have a house with brick piers, but the extension had steel piers for that kind of thing. Uh, the floor type, you can timber it with concrete areas. The roof is coated metal and fences. Now let's just say for instance that the answer that we want isn't here. All you need to do is hit add other and you can type in whatever you like. Let's, let's say chicken wire fence. That will then populate that box with chicken wire. So it just makes the forms completely adaptable to the situation that you're, you're, that you're inspecting. Uh, let's go into brief description of areas inspected. Once again, this is a checkbox, so you can tick as many of these as you like. Uh, anything that you don't tick won't come into the report. So you're only commenting on the relevant information. Okay, areas not inspected and reasons why. Let's touch on that. So here you can see when you've chosen interior, you've got the different options here uh, for obstructions. Okay, so you can tick as many of those as you like. Uh, let's tick on roof void. It gives you relevant obstructions to the roof void area. So you can touch as many of those as you need to. Any, the same as in the in the other section, any section that you don't comment on here, they won't come into the report. So if I don't touch on subfloor, it won't comment on it in the report. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. I won't do any more of those. There's a section there for photos of obstructions if you want to make it clear to the client what you were talking about. Okay, let's uh, we'll skip 1.3 because that's fairly similar, and we'll go into subterranean termites. This is the real meat of the report now. You can see here there's a question: at the time of inspection, were live termites found? If we choose no, then nothing happens, and we simply move on to the next question. But if we were to choose yes, however, it then gives us the opportunity to comment on things like the location, the species. So we can say where we found them. We can comment on the species of them. And we can take a photo. So let's uh, add a photo from the library. We can grab a, an appropriate photo there. You'll notice underneath the photo section, there's a photo comments. 
uh, this is a, a typical text box so anything can be typed in but there's also an option called voice to text so you can see on the keyboard down the bottom there's a microphone between the one two three and the space bar let's just touch on that these are the comments on the photo of live termites found okay you can see that it's almost correct 95% of the time it'll get it right it's just a matter of the way you talk to it but these are the comments on the photo of my termites found so we'll change that just by editing it okay and that, that's complete much faster than typing it uh, even if it does make mistakes it's still a lot quicker to do it that way then you get to comment on what sort of damage it was uh, and these questions here are, are all very similar so if you answer no nothing happens but if you were to answer yes it then gives you the ability to comment on other things termite nest found yes you can take a photo of the nest describe where it was found comment to the photo so we won't go into all these sections because they're all a very similar way but you can see how everything's being uh, being covered in the report Let's jump down to conducive condition photos. So this is a, an important thing that you want to tell the client uh, very specifically what they need to fix in order for their, their house to be safer from termites. So here you can, uh, let's add photo from library, choose the photo, uh, let's pick that one there. Uh, photo comment, so you can comment on each individual photo here. So. This area is a conducive condition and needs to be fixed. Simple as that. Now, if you want to take another photo of a, of a conducive condition, uh, you can take more than one photo in that section under that comment. But if you want to take another photo with another comment, just hit next photo and it'll give you that option again. So you can now add a photo from the library or from the camera, choose the conducive condition and make another photo comment simple as that and you can do that as many times as you like uh, we'll go into the certification section now here's just a drop down for the recommended inspections I'll say six months this is the area for any additional information required for this report So you can see it's very, very accurate. Um, it does make a little bit of difference about, I guess, about how much noise you've got around you and there's other people talking, it may get a bit confused, but it's a, it's a great tool. Uh, you can see here the mud map. Now we are just about to release a brand new version of this, which is which is far advanced on this one. But this, this allows you to, to do a basic mud map of, of the property that you're inspecting. Yeah, so you can, you can draw freehand lines you can choose the snap to grid option down the bottom and draw straight lines There's all sorts of things you can do with that the new version has a legend where you can actually drag and drop symbols onto it you can input photos uh, and that will be launched any day now okay we'll save that and we'll go back and we've just about completed the form so we'll choose the date it's completed today and we can draw our signature in there if you don't quite get it right you can just hit clear and and go again that now I've just done that with my finger but you can use a stylus which is a basically a pen design for for these sort of screens uh, and once we're finished we just hit complete form Okay, you'll notice down the bottom now there's there's a, a tab called Submit Job. So once we're happy with it, uh, you can see there's a green completed under the status. So the job's done. Let's submit the job. Okay, so that job has now been submitted and gone back to the management portal. So it's left the device. Uh, we can't edit it on the device anymore, but you have absolute full 
ability to edit that form back in the management portal. Okay, now that has been sent to my email address. So, so I will receive that as a finished PDF uh, any second, but that form is now a permanent record in the management portal. And we'll go and have a look at that in a minute. Okay, you can see that the email has just popped in. So it's, uh, it's sent the email and that PDF of that report is attached. So what we'll do now is we'll go in and have a look at the management portal.